Broken Hill, the Silver City, awakens to the drums of industry. When BHP was just a small mine in the outback, they realised that you couldn't uh, run a mine from Broken Hill. Uh, they should be in a bigger city where you could gain financial expertise. Uh, they chose Melbourne. Uh, Melbourne was then the financial capital of Australia. Melbourne was the biggest city in Australia. It had, through gold, the most powerful mining industry. So Melbourne was the ideal place in which to set up the head office, the place where the board met and important decisions were made. These headquarters of BHP Billiton are about four or five drop kicks away from where the first board of directors met in a very, very small building. And in fact, uh, when the directors came in for board meetings, uh, they used to play two up with gold sovereigns before they sat down to their business. I don't suppose they do that anymore. The concentrates produced by the various mines average about 75% lead, 35 ounces of silver per tonne, and 15% sulphur. So here were these sheep men, knew a lot about sheep, owning this very rich silver lead mine. Nobody in Australia they could go to who had experience in running a silver lead mine or treating the ore. They made one of the great decisions in Australian industrial history. The directors of this brand new little company said, we'll go to the United States, we'll go to the best mines in the United States, and we'll see if we can steal the best men. And so they sent one of their members to Colorado, looking around to see who was the best. And they brought back a famous mine manager from the Comstock load from Virginia City, named Patton, and they brought back a younger man of German descent named Hermann Schlapp. Patton uh, was the general manager of the new mine at Broken Hill. He was paid a huge salary and uh, he's said to have uh, remarked that he deserved a big salary having to live in Broken Hill. He brought out from the Comstock load a method of supporting the underground workings that required structures of Oregon timber to give additional safety to the underground workings. And Broken Hill became a huge importer of Oregon timber and the timber was sent by train to Broken Hill to support all the workings. But many of the techniques they used at Broken Hill, they came both in smelting and mining from Nevada, Virginia City. If you look at some of the big steps in the history of BHP, uh, starting the mine and smelter, they went to the United States for their experts. When eventually they decided that the future of their mine at Broken Hill was limited, and they decided to send up steel works, they went to Philadelphia for the steel expert and he guided them. When in the 1960s, uh, they wondered if by chance a major oil and gas field would be found in Australia. And they thought, wouldn't it be terrible if somebody else found it? <laughs> right where we're working, they went for an expert in the United States, Dr Weeks. And he said, go to Bass Strait. And there's probably oil under Bass Strait. So at major stages in the history of BHP, they went overseas for experts. At the same time, they remained a very nationalist company. They believed that Australians could do anything.